Hey, how you doing? Welcome to Restoration From Within. Here at Restoration From Within, every Thursdays, we come here for Temple Talk Thursdays at 1230 Eastern Standard Time. I apologize for being um, late. Uh, as I was trying to go live, my baby decided he wanted to knock on the door like he was the police. <laughs> so I had to take care of him real quick. But I just wanted to say happy Thursday. Hey, San Quinetta, how you doing? Thank you for joining us. Happy Thursday. And also to wish all my chicas out there happy International Women's International Day today. We celebrate each and every one of you, those who are here catching the live and also those who are here that are going to catch the replay. By the way, if you're catching the replay, please put hashtag replay so I could properly greet you. And if you're here for the first time, please let me know um, by placing a one in the comment section so I could properly greet you as well. Um, so uh, without further ado, let me introduce myself. For those of you who have, this is your first time watching Temple Talk Thursdays, um, my name is Kat Pons. I'm the restoration coach here at Restoration From Within. At Restoration From Within, we work with women who want to go back to an overall healthy place for themselves personally, for their families, but most importantly, for God. And um, we have been going through uh, a series called Power Over Emotions. Yes, Power Over Emotions. And um, we're in the third part of that series. The first, the first portion of it, we talked about emotional intelligence, and we defined it, and we even um, talked about, hey, hey, fam, how you doing, Barry? Thank you for joining us. Thank you for the love. Um, and we were talking about emotional intelligence, and um, I'm just looking at my notes to make sure that I'm giving you um, the proper... Sets, sets of order of how we talked about it. We talked about what's your EQ. We talked about what having high emotional intelligence looks like and what also what low intel intelligence, um, emotional intelligence looks like as well. And then we talked about how um, the seed of emotional intelligence, it really kind of um, is broken down in four components and four foundational components. Then we talked about self-awareness. How does self-awareness look like with high emotional intelligence? And we also gave some non-examples. Hey, Moni, how you doing, sis? I love you. Thank you for joining us. And then today, now that we laid a like, strong foundation with self-awareness, now we're going to go to the second portion of our being conscious, being personally conscious of your of who you are first. And then um, once we build on these two sections, then we're gonna go into social awareness when it comes to emotional intelligence. So the second portion that we're gonna talk about today is self-management. Yep, we're gonna talk about self-management and we're gonna literally gonna look at the Bible and I'm gonna share some experience on how um, I handled uh, self-management well and how I didn't handle self-management and the lessons learned from that. So without further ado, um, get your notes out, uh, get a glass of water or a bottle of water, and let's dive in into having and into learning more about how can we have power over our emotions. So the first portion that we're going to talk about is um, what define what is self-management. Today we're going to talk about three areas. We're going to define self-management. We're going to see how we measure that, um, if we need to improve in this area, or if we need to just sharpen our, continuously sharpen our skills. Because um, being this uh, emotional intelligence is like our walk with Christ. It's you're never going to arrive per se. It's a growing process, and um, and just like you know we're growing Christ and we're stretched. You know we we go through some challenges, um, and, but God is still with us. This is an area. You know, to um, this is kind of like since we're talking about Esther, right? I'm gonna make it. This is how I can associate with Esther. The book of Esther, um, it doesn't really mention it. Well, it doesn't mention God at all, right? And I have not mentioned God per se, but God is all in the midst of this because at the core of everything that we're learning here, what we're doing is we are sharpening our character. You know, we are increasing our character. We are increasing. Um, our emotions and learning how not to lead with our emotions, but um, think, you know, we're emotional beings, you know, that's going to happen. However, it's the reactions or the response that we give after those emotions take place because we're emotional beings. That's the way that God created us to be. And, and so I just wanted to, you know, put that out there because we are Christ-centered 
um, organization. And, um, and even though God has blessed me to, you know, give me wisdom through the emotional intelligence 2.0 book, which I highly encourage you to get it. And this is the book that I'm coming from. Um, still, you know, I utilize God's wisdom. He gave me wisdom to, um, compare it to, you know, how we men and women, cause this is, I know this is just, a, this is a show specifically for women, but men also can learn how to grow in that area of emotional intelligence. So we're going to define intelligence. We're going to measure it, see how it is. And we're going to go over some non-examples and examples and strategies on how to increase our self management, you know, because we talked about self awareness. And before we begin, I want to go over self awareness again so we could define it and then we can build on um, what we're going to talk about today. So, in my notes here, the definition given in emotional intelligence um, self awareness, self awareness is pretty much um, knowing how you react. Knowing that, it, like in the moment, knowing that how you're going to react emotionally, being aware of your emotions when you're reacting to something or someone. That's pretty much what self-awareness is. And so with that being said and having a strong foundation, and if those of you who haven't caught the, uh, the self-awareness, uh, power over our emotions through self-awareness, please catch it. You can catch it on our Facebook page right here. And so then you can see how we're building on, you know, everything is building on each other. So self-management is, self-management is your, um, you being able, be, because you're aware already, you're being able to actively choose what you say or do with those emotions. Before it's being aware how your actions, your emotions impact or, you know, the situation or someone now we're going to into the we putting action into it now we're actively choosing how what we say and what we do in a situation so okay so what what are you trying to say cat okay i like the definition right so i have some examples here keeping yourself in check when your emotions are strong do I have this all together? Nope, no nope, nope i sure don't i don't have this together but i need i wanted to um but this is a great example, and this is an area where um, self-management is the area of growth for me. And oh, I left my, um, I was supposed to share my appraisal, but one of the areas for my, that, I, um, that I can increase in is um, self-management, is um, keeping your emotions in check, and not just um, uh, practicing self-control at that time, but also, um, I'm going a little bit ahead of myself, is, um, is not just um, checking your emotions, but also being aware of what's happening and how to handle it in a better light. And then another one is knowing how to manage your emotions with people and situations. So it's not necessarily just self-control, but it's also managing yourself dur during that situation, especially in high stress situation. I mean, it's easy to say, you know, oh man, that, that darn cat, you know, that darn, well, that not the cat, we don't, you, I, I don't favor cats, but all oh, my cat lovers out there, I love y'all. Um, but uh, my dog, I'd be like, dang, that dog keep barking. And then, you know, that's easy to identify, right? Because you become quickly irate, you know, and you're like, okay, I need to check myself. But real self-management, when you can measure the growth, and that's what we're going to go into, is um, is how do we measure your level of measurement, uh, a level of self-management, uh, is your ability to um, tolerate the uncertainty as you explore your emotions and options, especially in high stress situations. So that's what you, hey Karen, how you doing? I love you too, Moni. And so, and then also another example is when you put your momentary needs on hold to pursue the larger picture, you know, to, uh, to pursue what's most important. And so, um, as far as giving you examples and non-examples, I can give you a personal one for me. Um, hey, Mama D, how you doing? Thank you for joining us. For those of you um, who just joined us, my name is Kat Pons with Restoration From Within. Um, we're doing Temple Talk Thursdays here, and today's conversation is power over our emotions through self-management. We just defined self-management, and we also um, talked about how we can measure it. Hey, A, how you doing? Okay, awesome. Okay, so um, so um, um, so now we're going to talk about examples and non-examples of self-management. 
So, all right, I'm going to define self-management one more time so you can see um, my story that I'm going to share with you, okay? So, uh, you're, you're, used, you're used to be, you know, you're being a, your ability, excuse me, I don't know what's going on today, the DJ's in town, wiki, wiki, wiki. <laughs> so, you're used uh, to uh, your awareness of your emotions to actively choose what you say or do. All right, so I'm going to give you a non-example, right? So recently, um, my husband and I, we've had, we had a heated discussion. I did not agree with the way he reacted towards something. And, um, instead of me, um, looking at the bigger picture, the ultimate outcome should have been, okay, um, is this going to solve the problem or I'm just expressing my frustration and my emotions in this situation? I didn't do that, right? So um, I decided to express my emotions that I felt at that time. But honestly, I want you to think of what I just said. You know, um, I said, it's emo you know, we are, we are aware of our emotions, right? That's self-awareness. I was aware of it because if you go back to self-awareness, we talked about how our physical being, our body, gives us signals of how our emotions are about to take place, right? And remember how um, with with, uh, with our emotions, those are actual um, um, electricity like nerve endings going to the back of our brain. And it has to go through the limbic system where that's where emo our emotions come from before they get to the thought process, which is in our frontal lobe. So it has to go through the emotions. So before it gets there, our emotions are already trigger signs to show us, okay, we need to keep our emotions in check. Did I do that? No, I, my heart started re, you know, my, my, my heart was beating. My heart rate was faster. I began, I became very upset. And at this, at that time I was, um, I became anxious. My stomach started to turn, you know, so these were all signs that I'd say, I pay attention to them. Mm -mm. Did I even pay attention to that still small voice that the Holy Spirit was telling me, like, just shut your mouth and pray. Mm -mm. Guess what your girl did? She expressed what she wanted to do and she really, I did two things, you know, in the spiritual, I'm going to take a side note here, in the spiritual realm, I did not speak life to that situation, which I should have done instead of, you know, I should have prayed about it, right? I, what I did was I, you know, I spoke to the situation in a negative sense that gave more uh, fuel to the fire. So that was a lesson learned for me. And so that's, that's an example of what not to do or to show that there's some areas of growth when it comes to self-management. And I wanted to bring the Holy Spirit. I was studying Esther, right? I'm sorry. I, I, I keep looking down. I just want to make sure I'm sharing my notes properly with you because this is really, really good stuff. So I was um, studying Esther about a couple of weeks ago. And so in Esther, um, the Holy Spirit brought it back to my remembrance when I was studying, you know, self-management. And in self-management, I'm going to give you two examples in the book of Esther that shows you um, uh, the person who has a low self-management um, capabilities and a person who has a high um, self-management capability, okay? So um, let's, let's look at... Uh, uh, what's his name? The Pharaoh, Xerxes, King Xerxes, right? In Esther 11, um, in Esther 1, 11, and 12. If those of you who want to put it up there, Esther um, 1, 11, and 12. Okay, Esther is before Job. Awesome mess. Okay, so in Esther 1, 11 and 12 and uh those of you who are not aware of the story um esther was pretty much um she was uh kidnapped <laughs> and um well she was taken from her people and she was uh taken to uh the king's house to and then prepared to be uh be chosen to be one of the to the to be the queen and she was chosen and um and that's not the gist of the story but she she stood um she interceded for the Jews and she saved their lives. Um, I don't want to, you know, give you all the story. You go catch it yourself and you'll see, this is one of my favorite books here, this one and Ruth. So in, um, in Esther 1, 11 and 12, I'm reading from the new King James version. It says, um, the queen that was there before her, she, she got vanished. That's the whole reason why she, um, Esther got sent to the kingdom 
to be one of the women to be chosen to be the queen. So um, Queen Vashti, what, she, what happened was, I'm hopefully I'm saying the name right. So Queen uh, Vashti, she was the queen before. And um, King Xerxes, he was having a party with, with um, a lot of the, the royalty. And, and actually the party was preparation for war. And he was pretty much showing what the riches that he had, you know, he wanted to show out. And uh, Persian kings were known to do that, to, you know, show off and, and um, hear that, to show off and to, um, they even wore jewelry in their beards. That's just side note. But um, they really, you know, he had to show his power and that he could fund this war. So he had a lot of people uh, from different continents around him come to that, you know, to that gathering. And this gathering has been going on for like six months. And this is towards the end. So he's been drinking, he's been, um, he's been partying with the men. And so she had a gathering with the women, the men and women, I guess in this section, they, they didn't party together. Um, I don't consider myself a, uh, uh, a, uh, uh, that knowledgeable of the word, but I, I know something to, to keep me going and I'm studying. Um, so, okay. So I'm setting the scene for you, right? So this is what happened. So, um, he sends for her cause he wants to show her off cause she's really beautiful. So she's like, um, so he says to, um, so he's having the party. So on the seventh day, and this is on 10, I'm going to 10 on the seventh day when the heart of the King was married with wine. All right. So he was, you know, so he was already, you know, he was a little tipsy. He was, uh, partying with his, uh, with his peoples. He commanded, uh, Mehuman, Bitsta, Harbona, Big Pug, all those guys, right? Seven eunuchs who served in the presence of his king, eurix to bring Queen Vashti before the king, wearing the royal crown in order to show her beauty to the people and the officials, right? For she was beautiful to behold. But Queen Vashti refused to come at the king's command brought by his eunuchs. Therefore, the king was furious and his anger burned within with him, right? Within him. So again, that's an example going back to even, you know, how I handled the situation. Okay. I know that there was, uh, some, you know, there was alcohol, uh, it infused in this story. However, however, um, he, he just went from one thing to the, to the other. He, um, he did not, you know, he led with his emotions. He did not critically think about the situation, even though he was inebriated, you know, we're going to go into, um, you know, he had other people around him as well. So he didn't even have good counsel. We're going to, I'm going to pin that because we're going to come to that in the strategies on how to increase your self aware, your self management. And, and that, that really struck me because I was just like, okay, you know, he did not take the time to think about what happened. And that's a great example that we can see about self-management. He didn't, um, he didn't even consider, he didn't even count the cost of what he was doing. He just spoke what was out his mind. He didn't, he, so, so you see that, um, well, we really see in, by my example and by his example, the detriment of what can occur when we lead with our emotions, when we don't have, uh, we, we don't allow to think through what's going on, when we are not aware of our emotions or aware, um, aware enough to think and do what we're supposed to do, you know, what's the most effective thing to do at that time, you know, utilize wisdom. So based on your decisions on carefully thinking, not the emotions of the moment. So that's the lesson learned here. And that's what I put here. Base your decisions on carefully thinking, not on your emotions of the moment. You know, and there's also a saying where it says, um, I've heard it before. It says, um, don't make... Um, um, don't make uh, permanent decisions on temporary emotions. And that's one of the things that I, that I learned here in this story. So an example of someone who utilized or, uh, you know, who was aware of their emotions and who, and, and they, because they were aware of their emotions, they chose to do the right thing. They, what they did was they put their needs, their temporary needs to the side and looked at the bigger picture is Ta da is my girl, Queen Esther. You know, in um in Esther four and five, she agrees to help the Jews. You could, you know, you could see that. You could see in that story, and I'm gonna go back to that as well. In that story, how she, you know, she kind of like was, all right, man, you know, am I gonna do it? Am I not gonna do it? And she had wise counsel, you know, she had good people around her. Um, and then uh, in number five, in Esther five, she intercedes for her people. 
So because she she utilized, you know, she was aware of, of her emotions, she did what was right. She put her emotions to the side, you know, her fear, and she interceded for the Jews. And that was a big thing because she went up to the king. And once you read the story, when you went up to the king without asking, you could and you went into, you know, his his area where his throne was, you automatically, you know, you're you die. You you pretty much, you know, you're signing off your you know death certificate however he um he uh i forgot what he says um here i want to use the right word let me see he says uh he put his golden scepter out and by placing by doing that he you know he he uh he protected her he covered her so um but she took a chance she didn't know if he was going to do that or not but she took a chance and she interceded for her people. So this is a really good example. And please read the story of Esther. It's such a great story. It is such a great story. You can learn so much from it. I've learned a lot of stories. You know, a lot of people touch on it. However, there's so much more. You know, I love the I love how when you study the word, um, it literally breaks down new things to you. And that's what I've learned in um that's what I learned, self-management. See, in the Bible in itself, in the book where it doesn't talk about God. You know, um, but it talks about, you know, directly, but it talks about his hand in, on these situations, just like his hand is upon us. So, you know, as I speak these things, I just ask God to continue to um, help us to utilize wisdom to water the seed of emotional intelligence so that we can increase in this area. And, and, and Father God, I ask and pray that the fruits that we see come out of our increase of emotional intelligence are, you know, time management, how to communicate with others, be aware of our emotions and, and know how to handle situations with your wisdom and show your fruits of the spirit, Father God. So I thank you so much. And I also wanted to talk, touch on somebody else. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Um, I love Moses. He, he is like one of my top people, right? And um, one of the things that we can learn from him also, and I pray that, you know, we, we can learn from his story and not learn, you know, not have to learn from our own mistakes, you know. And so that's why I'm asking that God opens our hearts for that is that um, he missed going to the promised land because he um, wasn't aware of his emotions. Remember when he, you know, for those of you who don't know the story, he was an awesome, awesome. He pretty much, you know led the people out of captivity and um and towards the end though uh because he was upset with the people he um he sh he did not follow the instructions that god gave him and because he was angry at the time um he struck it instead out of anger instead of what god told him to do um and uh because of that um he was not able to um reach the promised land he was god allowed him to see the promised land but he was not able to um, reach the promised land. So, Father God, I also ask and pray right now that you um, help us be more aware so that we can know and understand and have wisdom to, to think, you know, take breaths, Father God, to think before we act, Father God. Um, and I'm including myself as, as we speak so th that we do not miss the promise that you have for us, Father. Continue to work in us. Continue to do the surgery that you need so that we can restore from within, Father God. It is in your mighty name I ask and pray all these things. Amen. And so I just wanted to share that with you. And some of the tips that this book have, and I'm telling you, this is a great investment. Emotional Intelligence 2.0. There's 15 strategies for every component of emotional intelligence. I'm not going to go over all of them, but I just wanted to touch on a couple of them, which really, really shocked me. I was like, wow. You know, um, one of them is breathe right. Breathe right. And that's the first one I want to share. That's the first strategy. So we covered the definition. We talked about how to measure our self-awareness. We talked about some examples and non-examples of what it is to um, be at an active participant when it comes to self-management and when it comes to when uh, and also an example of showing us what it is not to do in a situation and some lessons learned from those um from um, being led with our emotions. And um, just to go back to King Xerxes, um, you can see that in the next chapter, in chapter two, 
um, I just wanted to show you that he regretted what he did. You know, he, he woke up remorseful. Let me show you that. I just wanted to show you that because he, you know, and that's what shows me that he regretted that he led with emotions because in Esther 2, um, in Esther 2 and 1, he says, after the, these things, when the wrath of the king, uh, they have the, they have the Greek, the Hebrew name for it. So I don't know what, um, <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I'm, I'm going to enunciate it. A hair, a hair, a hasuros. Mm, yeah, I'm going to work on that, but it's King Xerxes subsided. He remembered Vashti, what she had done and what had been decreed against her. So as you see that there was some type of remorse there and what he did to his wife because he led with anger. So, um, so the first strategy is in self-management that I wanted to share with you is breathe right. Okay. I understand that breathing is the simplest thing that I can tell you, right? You always hear everybody says, Oh, take deep breaths, take deep breaths. Well, guess what? This is the smallest thing that you can do that has the greatest impact. I'm going to get into the medical side of it. When we take deep breaths, it actually helps us to bring air into our minds so that we can think clearly, so that we can have more energy. And even into our bodies, we need more air. These, these um, shallow breaths that we're taking, they're really not helping us. That's why you know some of us probably are um, trying to see, okay, what energy pills I can take or what's, what I can do for energy. But it might just be that you're not taking deep breaths especially during stressful situations or when you were in a, a heated argument or or whatever it is that is a high impact situation you um you you allow yourself time to take these deep breaths because it's not just going to calm you down it's also oxygenating your brain it's oxygenating your organs it's oxygen oxygenating your actual you know uh i don't even know if oxygenating is a word but i'm going to use it today um it's it's take it's Breathe, breathing life back into your organs is breathing life back into your temple and it allows you to calm down it relaxes you it allows you to think clearly so please utilize that and when i say deep breaths i mean this is an example where you can know how to take a deep breath put uh put for us put one hand uh like right where your sternum is you do that and then put one right um below it in your abdomen and when you breathe in Breathe in as much as you can, and then breathe out. And the way that you can test it is that you look low, and if once you breathe out, and that, that breath that you're breathing out, um, when, your, when your stomach expands farther than the hand that you have in your sternum, then you're actually taking deep breaths. So that's a measurement of how you know that you're taking um, good deep breaths. So that's number one, that's the number one strategy. And the next one that I wanted to talk about is, um, let me see, where, where is that? Holy Spirit, help me. Let me see, let me see. Okay, Stacy's. Um, let me see. Hey, oh, look at Sanquaneta says, breathing is imperative to muscles and our organs. It brings so much more energy and life to those areas that are tight and teased. Come on, Sanquaneta. Let me see if you got more. Taking deep breaths. Once you get in the bed for evening, it will help you fall asleep. Look at that, Sanquaneta. She is, um, she's a certified massage therapist and she got, you know, she has the gift of healing in her hands. So look, she's giving us some great wisdom. Thanks, Sanquaneta. Hey, Antoinette, how you doing, beautiful? So the next one is um, surround yourself uh, with people who are um, who who are aware of their you know their self management you know and so I'm gonna give you an example of me so um, yeah ten up yeah definitely ten up so it relaxes the muscles as well so that's a great tip thank you so much Sanquaneta okay so another one is surround yourself with people who are who are aware of their self management you know so that they're accountable to you you know people who love you and will tell you the truth in love okay let me give you the example right going back to my story so i i i spoke to um two of my of my girlfriends my dearest girlfriends and i was expressing my frustration in that situation okay side note um, let's be real girls but what, what i was really doing was trying to, you know to get um 
two things. I was, um, I was trying to be like, yeah, girl, you know, get one of those, yeah, girl, you, uh, situations. But at the same time, I was also seeking wisdom because I know that this is an area that I need to grow in. And I want somebody that's outside to talk to me objectively. Somebody who's also going to pray with me, not pray, you know, pray on me and put my business out there on front street. So I spoke to my girlfriend and my girlfriend was like, Listen, I'm going a, I'm to a be real with you. You know, this is A, B, and C. This is what you really need to do for this time so that you can keep your sanity and move forward with the vision that you have and, and not focus on the problem and keep doing what you need to do as a wife, as a mompreneur, as a mother, this is what you need to do. Let's be real with, you know, we need, you need to be real with yourself. And that's exactly what I needed at that time. And that's one of the strategies that the, that this book shares with us surround us. You know, I mean, even in the Bible, it says, I know I say it all, all the time, excuse me, that, you know, a three strand cord is, is not easily broken. And I'm telling you, it's not easily broken when you have those accountability partners in your life. Um, whether, whether, you know, if it is another situation, you know, and my husband is my, he is my accountability partner. We just, uh, we just having some intense fellowship right now, but I, I truly believe that these, these, uh, situations are occurring so that we can become stronger with each other. Hi, Levy. Hi, Panima. How you doing? Thank you for joining us. So that's an example, right? And then I went to my other girlfriend and I asked, you know, and I also shared my frustrations with her and she was, you know, and, and that she gave me another perspective. She's like, you know what? Um, let's thank God for the blessings in this situation. Thank God for the opportunities that you have that you can count your blessings on and not focus on what's negative. So you see how they re redirected my path. They redirected my perspective. They helped me to be accountable to what Christ has called me. And they also helped me to be accountable to, you know what I'm saying, to, to myself. To, you know, they put that mirror in my face and by the side of it, they say, hey, I love you, but you need to work on this. However, you need to work on this, okay? I love you. However, I want you to be the best you that you can be, and I'm going to tell you this in love. And I thank God for that. And that's one of the things that you, you know, have want, want to keep in mind and want to be accountable. So, um... I hope that this has blessed you today. I won't, I don't want to take a, a lot of your time, but I hope this has blessed you today and that you are you restoring yourself from within in, in the series that we're having about, about power over our emotions. And today we talked about power over our emotions through self-management. Uh, self we talked about self-awareness. Now this is self-management. And now we talked about our personal perspective, right? That's uh, probably half of the seed of emotional intelligence. Now we're going to go into um, social perspective. We talked, we learned about how, who we are and how, you know, we react to others. Now we're going to put that into action and see how our actions impact our social awareness and be more aware of other people and how how our expressions or how our behavior impacts them as well. So I, I pray that this has blessed you. If you love this um, this series that we're going through, please tag a girlfriend or share it, you know, share it with them so that they can they can be blessed as well. Again, happy Women's International Day. I love you to life, ladies. And because it is Women's International Day, um, I'm doing a flash sale today. Yes, please share it with your girlfriend. Please tag a girlfriend and let her know that if you purchase your book today by 12 midnight today, I will be blessing each person who purchases a, um, a, a book today, my brand new book that's coming out, Restoring the Temple, Seven Steps to a Healthier You. I'm trying to take off the necklace so I can show you this beautiful charm. Oh, but it's not working. Of course it's not. Okay. Hold on. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Okay. So this beautiful charm, I've added my my other charm as well, but I wanted to show you. I wanted to uh, show you right here. You see that? That's my charm. That's not the one. But if you purchase your book today, ah, let me see. I will um I will bless you with a battle charm. And this is the battle charm right here. This is it has the um warrior logo. 
I'm trying to help, I'm trying to do it. You see the warrior? And it also comes with an arrow, so we could be battle ready, because we are also, um, what we're doing here also is preparing ourselves, you know, emotionally preparing ourselves for what's to come. Because one of the attacks that the enemy does as women, he tries to attack our emotions, our mind. Because at the end of the day, it's a battlefield in the mind. And once we empower ourselves and know how to utilize our emotions, we'll be better equipped. So this beautiful charm, I am giving away for every book that you purchase. I'm giving away this beautiful charm today by 12 midnight. And you'll also be signed up for uh to be registered to win a fitbit alta hd on the day of our launch and our launch day will be at the end of this month so if you're ready you know are you ready to take control of your health and march into what god has in store for you and return back to his you know his will for your life by all means this book is for you um restoring the temple seven steps to a healthier you it's a great investment it's time for you to invest in yourself so definitely um I don't, I don't know if it's going to be specifically this one, but if you choose whatever one you choose, you'll get this beautiful battle-ready charm. And they're so beautiful. She has bracelets also. Um, and, and I just wanted to be a blessing to y'all today for Women's International Day. I really wanted to um, say I celebrate you and thank you for, for everything that you do, for supporting me, for loving me, for giving me the opportunity and trusting me to take this journey with you, your health journey with you. So again... Um, here is the beautiful charm. I love this one because it's the arrow. Oh, and she has another one. Hold on a second. I have this one as well. I will be done here in a minute, I promise. Okay, so this is, it comes with a scripture. I don't know if y'all can see it. The lighting is not. There you go. And then I have another one as well here. You see that one? This is the sword. And it also has the warrior charm as well. Hey, Silica, how you doing? So definitely, if you purchase today, you get one of these charms. It'll be a surprise which charm that you get. You get one of these charms as a blessing if you purchase your book today. Um, and you can go to my site, www.restorationfromwithin.com. I know this is the sword and also got um, the arrows. The arrows. Those of you who were at uh, Warrior Rise know what happened with the arrows. And you know how I had to get this arrow. So definitely, thank you so much for joining us. I will also make another post if you want to um, to get your Battle Ready Charm and uh, Restore From Within today. By all means, join. And if you also want to join our our um, community uh, in online, by all means, please join us, www.restorationfromwithin, and register today. Everything is there. You register today. You can look at the, sh you know, the shopping area. You can, you know, you can also, once you register, you'll get a complimentary re Renew and Restore Manifesto with 10 steps to renew and restore from within today. Not tomorrow, not yesterday, but today. So I love y'all to life. Yeah, see, so there's a crown. There's also the sword. Um, oh, there's keychains and um, the key with the, with, um, with the warrior. So there's different styles that you can get here. And, um, and again... This is only for today. I might extend it. I might extend it because we're, um, I might, uh, go, hey, hey, we might go live together here in a few minutes. So, but definitely, I'm going to make the announcement and I just wanted you guys to go first and get the announcements, okay? I love y'all. Y'all have a great day. Bye.